It's often said that life is a journey. We're on a road with many different destinations, and many of us find driving on a road one of the greatest feelings of freedom. We can go anywhere we want to, at any time we want to. But we have to remember that not everyone has these freedoms that we often take for granted. Some of us are locked on a particular road, going to a particular destination, which we don't have any control over. Today, we are taking the road through the small rural community of Jefferson, Wisconsin, to explore St. Coletta, a facility that was designed for developmentally challenged children, and one that evolved in supporting and enabling disabled adults, granting them independence. As we approach the facility, I often wondered what went through the minds of children, adults, all who found themselves on the way to St. Coletta. Jefferson, Wisconsin's a small town, even today with a population just exceeding 7,000. It's quiet, it's peaceful. You can feel it reaching your inner core, filling you with serenity. You continue down your path, wondering where you're headed to. Do you know anything about St. Coletta? Do you even know why you're being sent there? I often wondered the thoughts of the children and the adults who were sent to St. Coletta. Did they know where they were going? Did they know why they were being sent there? As you come over the hill on the east side of Jefferson, heading east on Highway 18, you see the facility off to the right. A church on the hilltop overlooking the facility. And suddenly it comes up. The size surprises you. You had no idea that a building this large could be near a town this small. And when you step out, you feel a sense of ominous dread. Looking, wondering how long you'll be here. A year? or the rest of your life. Welcome. Today we'll be taking a look at St. Coletta, an American castle in rural Wisconsin. Taking a look at the history of St. Coletta. Founded in 1904 in the small community of Jefferson, Wisconsin, United States. The facility was originally founded by the Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi. It was a facility for the developmentally disabled, a school for the backward youth, as they called the developmentally disabled in the early 20th century. Over time, it evolved into a school for exceptional children, becoming a champion for independent living for disabled adults. A very interesting development for such a facility in the fact that originally it was for children and then it became for adults. It's quite an interesting checkered history that it has with what the target audience is, or should we say the target interned, because that's what a lot of these facilities were used for. Campus is currently abandoned, while a smaller facility continues its charter. Rumors of hauntings and unexplained occurrences persist to this day. Such things as varied as werewolves and ghosts and unexplained sounds within the main facility. Rosemary Kennedy is the most well-known resident of St. Coletta. She experienced a lobotomy that was directed by her father in 1941 due to the fact that it appeared that she did not conform to the Kennedy family standards. The sister of John F. Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy, she spent the rest of her life in St. Coletta from 1949 to 2005 after being completely incapacitated by her lobotomy. One of the main reasons that St. Coletta draws our attention is because of its own power plant, apple orchard, the hotel, and the fact that it's an off-grid community located only two miles from the outskirts of Jefferson on the east side of town. Why would such an extensive facility be built here? Why does it have the capacity to operate off-grid? Looking at where St. Coletta is actually located, in the greater Midwest area, you can see where Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, and Minnesota lay just to the west of Lake Michigan. Looking even closer at the blow-up of southeast Wisconsin on the right, we can see the three major points of interest. Milwaukee, large city in the east, originally starting as a very, very small town in 1840 of 1,700. 
Milwaukee draws our interest because it's also the location of the Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi and where they built their complex, which we'll take a look at momentarily. Going west from Milwaukee, we come across the small town of Jefferson, which is where St. Coletta is located. In the middle of many small rural communities that are sandwiched in between Milwaukee and Madison, the state capital. What draws our attention is the 1904 populations. In 1904, the population of Milwaukee was 285,315. In only 60 years, the population had increased by well over a quarter million. Jefferson at the time was only a small town of 2,584 and Madison the state capital of 19,164. So again, it continues the question, why did the Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi, located in Milwaukee, decide to build St. Coletta? in a small, isolated rural community. We have a story that we're going to take a look at that's on the official website of St. Coletta. Let's take a look at more history, the foundation of the Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi. Their story begins in 1849. A small group of lay Third Order Franciscans emigrated from small royal village of Ettenbiren, Bavaria, at the request of Archbishop J. Martin Heaney, the first Archbishop of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He had an intention to have missionaries to serve the growing number of German immigrants in the Milwaukee area. Responding to the invitation to become missionaries, a small band of six women and five men left Ettenburen on March 13, 1849 to journey to North America. Upon arriving, they settled in the Bay of Lake Michigan, on a strip of land known by the native people as Najoshing. Here, the women pioneered the beginnings of the Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi. Quite fascinating that uh, the original women who came over decided not to stay as they did not integrate well with the American women. Nevertheless, there appeared to be other sisters that remained, 37 of them. What's unclear is were these other sisters that came subsequently or were they converts once the original six had arrived and worked with the local American population? So what do 37 sisters of St. Francis of Assisi do? What kind of building do they have when they operate out of Milwaukee and they decide to become teachers? What kind of building indeed? It definitely makes you wonder. Ah, yes, of course. A large cathedral and a very large facility. One thing to know about Franciscans is one of their very prime traits is the fact that Poverty is the true path to God. Well, when you look at a facility like this, it definitely communicates poverty, doesn't it? Although, to be fair, comparing to other buildings and edifices in Milwaukee, this is rather modest. Although we have to remember this was for 37 sisters of St. Francis of Assisi. Nevertheless, you can see that even with the demolition that is clearly in place right now that this is quite a extraordinary facility of course <laughs> you can also see the franciscan commitment to poverty here in the franciscan convent in mafra in portugal to be fair this was a palace that was built by the king of portugal at the time in the early 18th century nevertheless the communicated opulence and remarkable construction, something that would be interesting to see constructed even to this day, done well over two centuries ago, all for piety. And now let us look at the story of St. Coletta. And they even call it that, their story, starting in 1904, family in need, lack of facilities, who cared for youth with disabilities, lack of training for these children to reach full potential. So apparently they were requested to come in and opened up a facility for five students. And that's how St. Coletta started, a facility for only five students. And they embraced the Franciscan mission. Eventually they increased over threefold to 17 students and prepared for their first Holy Communion. An initial growth that 70 children were enrolled and the program was growing quickly. So from 17 to 70, all during that same time frame. And then the story goes on that by 1929, they were testing IQs and had fully evolved into a custodial program and then into a school, building a school building in 1929, although which building that is in the facility is difficult to ascertain. It's quite fascinating when we look at this historical figure of Mother Thecla Thren, clearly one of the influential figures and one of the primary sisters. Obviously, she was one of the 
future sisters of the Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi, since she was born in 1868. But nevertheless, why is it in Jefferson, Wisconsin? And they could have established many small schools in all the small communities and operated out of their large facility in Milwaukee. So they decided to help a family in need in Jefferson, Wisconsin. And what did they end up building in Jefferson, Wisconsin? What is St. Coletta and what does it look like? They call it a school. Looking at St. Coletta from the north, you just see an immense building. A building with so many bricks and such majesty that there's not a single building in the entire town of Jefferson that compares to it. You see engravings in the walls that do, in all fairness, show what appear to be sisters or adults helping children. And yet the building extends for nearly six city blocks. And that's just the main building. When you look to the south, you see an immense campus, many different buildings of many different construction forms. Quite fascinating and haunting all at the same time. Historical buildings with brick mixed with the more modern, brutalist architecture buildings, something that you'd expect to see on a more traditional college campus. And when you walk through the campus, you are left with this haunting feeling. You know that you're walking in a facility that was ostensibly constructed to help people. But you also remember that many mental hospitals as part of the Kirkbride plan in the 19th century were constructed to help people. And the vast plethora of reasons that can find them there. I think about the people who were here children, the adults, everyone, the people who worked here, how it affected their lives. And they say there's a haunting presence here, and I certainly feel it, walking around, looking through the courtyard. This place is beautiful, but it's haunting and eerie at the same time. So many buildings, so much room for so many different people. Again, seeing the mixture of brick building with brutalist architecture building. And now we make our way to the St. Coletta Grotto, modeled after the sighting of the Virgin Mary in Lourdes, France. The grotto is incredible. It's amazing to think of the sisters of St. Francis of Assisi building that grotto. I find it remarkable that they managed such an achievement and frankly it'd be remarkable to build such a thing even today. Continuing along on the southern side of the campus, we have more traditional mass construction concrete buildings. And driving along the facility on Highway 18, proceeding back to the west, you see the entire facility. Again, the size is just perplexing. No building outside of large manufacturing companies match it. Moving north from the facility, the campus that's closed down, we come to what remains of St. Coletta, the remaining operational portion. And it's a rather impressive building itself, where they help treat adults with disabilities and help them achieve independent living many noble purposes that are associated with this facility. And it should be noted that this facility did coexist when the entire main campus to the south existed as well. And now looking back to the south from the facility in the north, again, it gives you an appreciation for the size of St. Coletta. And then driving back to the south on County Road Y, many people would have no idea how extensive the campus is. Even seeing the impressive main building driving by on Highway 18, it's still quite awe-inspiring, realizing that such a building and such a facility exist near the small town of Jefferson, Wisconsin. What are some conclusions that we could take from St. Coletta? The large campus buildings remain, and there's definitely a unique emotional resonance across the campus buildings. And I would say it's a mixture of positive feelings 
along with perhaps some eerie negative feelings. And these are just my perceptions. I certainly encourage you to explore the history and some other videos looking at the interior and exterior and some of the legends about St. Coletta. The haunting rumors do persist. There have been reports of unexplained sounds and sightings, ghosts, specters, and even a werewolf report. Certainly can't see that I certainly can't say that I saw anything like that walking the facility, but there was definitely a unique feeling. Is there a mystery with its construction? There's some oddities with several of the buildings and its existence alone, the fact that this entire school was built in Jefferson, Wisconsin. How was it funded, built and expanded so efficiently? It's interesting that uh, the Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi were able to establish so many amazing buildings out in the middle of nowhere Wisconsin in the early 20th century. And are there photos and construction plans still on record? We know that photos don't necessarily prove anything, but I would certainly love to see photos of these buildings being constructed, and I would very much appreciate to see photos of the grotto being constructed. What the Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi achieved, if they did achieve it, is remarkable. And even if they didn't, it's an inspiring official record for the facility. It has an amazing story, and it's something that we have to continue to ask questions about, to learn about who we are as a people, and something that we can learn more about ourselves going forward. Never be afraid to ask questions. Thank you for joining me for this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you soon.